So in this video, we're going to look at creating a scene variable uh, to keep track of the number of objects that we've collected. And the scene variables um, are simply variables that are accessible by all the flow graphs in that given scene. In some ways, this plays a role similar to maybe a static variable in a C-sharp coding environment um, or maybe a global variable in other coding environments. So what we're going to do first is come over here to our variables window. If you don't have it open, you can go up to window and choose a variables right here. And then we're going to choose the scene option. Now, if I just hit plus here, I find this a little bit of an annoying thing with, uh, with Bolt. It's going to remind me that I need a variable name and then it's going to make this red and then obnoxious, I have to name it. Or if you simply type in a name before you push the plus, it all works nice and smoothly. It's not that big of a deal, just feels a little odd to me. So I'm gonna name this collected, and I'm gonna hit plus, and by default, my type is integer, which is what I want. I'm gonna collect zero, one, two, three of these. I'm not gonna collect two and a half, so integer is the correct type. And again, with all of our variables, you can choose different types, but we're gonna leave ours as the integer. So now what we need to do is when this object is collected, we need to add one to this value. So to do that, we're going to come back to our flow graph. I'm going to right click and press A and I'm going to select add. And I'm going to get this uh, math scalar version. Okay, the generic one's a little bit different, but we're going to do our scalar. And we're going to, what this is going to do is take in a value A and a value B and add them together and put it out. So the A value is going to be this scene variable. So we drag out this value and I'm going to search for get variable. And what I want is get a scene variable. And again, you can see here we've got flow variables, graph variables, uh, we have save variables, and application variables. But for our case, we're just going to use a scene variable. Here in the drop down here, I can choose my collected. It's my only scene variable. So it's the only thing that's going to show up. And then this unit is the B value is already one, which is what we want to add to it. We just want to add one to this variable. The next thing we need to do in order to save this new value is set the collected scene variable to this new value. So I'm going to drag out this value and I'm going to type in set variable. And I want to make sure that I'm setting a scene variable. So that value is going up into here and I want to choose which scene variable. Again, I only have one, so it's the collected. So you may notice that the get variable and the add unit are grayed out or dimmed out. And that's because the set variable has a flow input here that we need to connect. Now we don't want to do it after this wait time that we created in the previous video. Uh, we want to do it immediately. We want that number to increase as soon as the player comes th uh, through the collectible. So I'm going to drag this series of nodes down a little bit, keep our organization little tidy. Definitely a downside to uh, node-based programming. It can get kind of unwieldy pretty quickly. I'm going to then grab this control here and drag it down to here. And you'll now notice that these have been dimmed out. So I'm simply going to move these over here and connect like so. So with this done, let's take a look and see what happens when we push play. If I walk through, again, you get the nice sound effect the collider and the um, sphere turn off and eventually the whole game object turns off. If you come over here to our variables and you click on scene, you can now see that the value has increased by one. So we're now keeping track of how many collectibles we have picked up. Now we want something to happen when we've collected some of our collectibles. I've gone ahead and duplicated the collectible and put five instances in the scene. I've also uh, created a prefab of that collectible in case I want to change something with the collectible or change the flow graph. All those uh, changes can get propagated through the prefabs. So when I set the collectible to be a prefab, I created a problem. And I created a problem with this unit right here that turns the sphere off. And the problem is, since this is a prefab and there is just one instance of this flow graph, this sphere is always going to be referencing the sphere on this collectible. So we can fix this pretty easily. And this is something that's going to come up when we make prefabs. Um, and so it's just something to be aware of that some strange behavior can come out and it's all very solvable. So what we're going to do is come down to this unit here that is going to turn off the sphere and we're going to drag this value down here and we're going to search for child. And what we want is transform get child. And the way this unit works 
is it uses this value here, this index, uh, to find the child at that index. So the index is start at zero. So if this value is zero, we're going to send up the first child uh, of this parent object, which is what we want. If we look at all of our prefabs, the sphere is the first and only child. So this will work great. Let's push play and see how this works. Now, if I go and collect this sphere here, it turns off immediately and the one back over here is still there. And I can collect it and it turns off immediately. And so forth. So we're working as intended once again with a little bit of modification since we made it a prefab. So when we go around and collect all five of these spheres, we want something to happen. And we're gonna make it so that Ethan, our third person character, gets bigger. We're gonna make his scale bigger. So let's create a new flow graph. Go back to the macros folder and right click, create, bolt, flow macro. And I'm gonna call this Ethan size up. And what we need to do is effectively uh, check every frame to see if we've collected all five of these. There are other ways to do this with custom events, but we're gonna keep it pretty simple for uh, this example. So in the Ethan size up flow graph, uh, we're going to right click, press A to bring up the fuzzy finder. We're gonna use the update event. So this event was gonna run every frame and that's gonna allow us to check the value of that scene variable to see if we reached it to five. So what we're gonna do is grab the flow, drag it over here, and we're gonna look for a branch. And this branch is going to evaluate a, the input here, whether it's true or false, and then send the flow out these other sides here according to true or false. So what we need to do is determine if that scene variable is equal to five. So what we're gonna do is drag this Boolean value over here. We're gonna look for equal. And we're gonna compare these two inputs, A and B. So A, we're gonna look for we're gonna get a scene variable. And I noticed this was a little bit of a bug when I did this before. I'm not able to select my scene variable for some reason on this uh, unit. But if I delete that and come over to my variables window and go to scene, I can actually do this a little bit quicker than searching through the fuzzy finder. I can just grab the scene variable, drag it over here, and then connect it up. And I get something that looks like that. Pretty quick, pretty easy. And so we're gonna take this value and we're gonna compare it to the B value. So I'm gonna drop that down over here. I want a, not a float value, I want an integer value. And we're gonna compare that to five. If this scene variable is equal to five, then this unit here is gonna send up a true and run out this um, flow through the true node. What we wanna do if it's true is change Ethan's scale. So I'm gonna drag this over here and I'm gonna look up transform scale. We wanna do local scale and we, we don't wanna set it to the default value of zero, 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 uh, but instead I'm gonna make it two, two, and two. We'll double Ethan's size. So let's push play and see how this works. So if we select Ethan or a third person controller here in our hierarchy, we can see the flow going through our flow graph. Our update event is triggering every frame. It's going to this branch and it's evaluating these Boolean statements here, whether the scene variable is equal to five. Because that's false, it is not sending the flow up to the local scale unit. So if I go and collect these, and so when that happens, Ethan's scale jumps up to two and he's almost as big as a tree. So we're now checking this value and we're able to do something based on the player collecting a certain number of our collectibles. So there you go. Our game is now reacting to the number of collectibles that the player has picked up, adding a whole nother level of functionality. In the next video, we'll continue to use triggers to add gameplay mechanics. Uh, we'll look at a moving platform, how we can get our third person controller to jump onto that platform, stick with that, stick to that platform, and maybe move across our scene. So I hope you found this useful, and I hope you'll join me next time for the next video.